Welcome. Here we are for the 20th anniversary of Sunflower Journeys. And what a treat. We have gotten all of the producers, or most all of them, here in the studio together to talk about what it's been like to produce this show for 20 years. Amanda Shaw and Claire Waring have come back to Kansas to be part of this. I wanted to start off by asking everyone to talk about the times that you've been producing segments for Sunflower Journeys. We'll start with Dave. <clears throat> well, I guess I came in pretty much at the beginning. The series didn't exist as such when I came on. I was here in 87 and we had the first show on the air in 1988 in January. Well, I came on the show in uh, 2000. I was a latecomer, um, fresh out of college, and um, got to take a crack at my first story. I was on county fairs in Kansas, so I spent an extremely, Dave and I spent an extremely hot day, hot in temperature since all the way in, where were we? Marshall County mm -hmm. at the fair, amongst the sheep and the giant tomatoes. I think I'm the newest comer. Yeah, I started uh, 2000, what year is this? <laughs> <laughs> 2005, uh, sometime in June. And my first story was in Bird City, Kansas for the antique uh, Thrasher and Antique Something Show. <laughs> so it was you hot too. It, yeah. <laughs> it was hot too. Like Amanda, it was really hot. I mean, no, she's hot, but I mean, it was hot. <laughs> Keep digging, John. <laughs> it's, it came out wrong. <laughs> We're on a roll. Here we go. I've been here since 88, since, since Dave has been doing these. and, and uh, the, the earliest, one of the earliest stories I can remember doing was the Huff and Puff balloon rally that was done out here. Well, right after, right when we were ready to shoot that one, I had broken my, my, my heel on my foot and I couldn't go flying. And Dave took over and went flying for me and did, got some of the most beautiful shots. And I always remember you kind of coming to my rescue on that one. That was, mm -hmm. that was a good, that was a good story. It turned out to be really, really fun. And, uh, but there were a lot of those. That was, that was one of the fun things about doing the series. It just seemed to be an endless supply of good stories to do. I came here in 1989 from Austin where I had uh, got my master's degree and I was working for the Fox affiliate. I'm originally from Michigan, Michigan. but, um, and actually I was the first non-native Kansan on the series because <laughs> I came here and Dave and Jim and Bill are all native Kansans, but... Did they as, make a big deal of that? Well, the <laughs> thing is, my roots are in Kansas. Both my mother and my father were born in Kansas. Mm -hmm. And so as a child, I had come to Salina every summer to visit my grandfather and driven past the Indian burial pit. And I was familiar with a number of things. My father's grandmother lived next door to William Allen White. And so he used to play and throw his ball into William Allen White's rose bushes and make him angry. <laughs> William <laughs> Allen White hit him with a stick once. So, so anyway, so I got to learn a lot of my family's, you know, background by working on the series. So I was, you know, one generation removed Kansan. And I left in 98, so I was here for nine years. And my, the first story that I worked on was Bill Gomer, the saddle maker. He kept talking about the secrets of the trade, but and how he doesn't hide the secrets of the trade. What is the process, just briefly? Gosh, I don't know. You don't know? No. We had trouble getting him to tell us about the secrets <laughs> of the trade. I started out at the beginning of the series, too, which is kind of scary for me. Like I said, I had no experience at writing scripts and things before we started doing Sunflower Journeys. No experience narrating. I had Bill narrate segments for the first couple of seasons for me. I started in 1998 on the series and it was about the, my third day and I was riding on a 100 degree day, I think that's just standard for the course, in a covered wagon so across the Flint Hills. So that's where I knew I had arrived at Sunflower Journeys. But my question now to Dave is, how did this program start, and was there a predecessor at KTW to Sunflower Journeys? Yeah. Well, from what I'd heard, it was something that the program director, Dave Pomeroy, had, had uh, kind of been pushing, wanting to get a regular series on the air. And there had been something on that had been somewhat irregular, I guess. Um, 
there were a couple of things. I'm not sure uh, if Sunflower Journal ever was a series. That was uh, a title. That, that was, was a, it. Was a title, but there weren't shows. It's also kind of along the same lines of a, of a mini series called "So This Is Kansas, Huh." Um, so we kind of came into that situation. I think that was in like an '85. There were when those were produced. So it was like three years later that I came in, and, and that was what they hired me for, um, with the idea that my main job would be to, you know, organize it into some kind of series. So somebody had suggested Sunflower Journal, so that was the original title, but then somebody else had, had, had heard that and thought it was Sunflower Journeys, and somebody, the program director, I think, liked that title better. And so we just will make a journeys. So the name was misinterpreted, and that's what became the title of the show for 20 years? I guess you could say that, <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Dave Kendall. Welcome to Sunflower Journeys. Tonight we bring you the first in a series of programs on the people, places, and things that go on in the Sunflower State. I, and I think the journey image is one thing that's made it so popular because that's kind of a, a positive thing, and people like traveling and journeys and it's just kind of a good feeling to it and then the sunflower I mean you know that's another kind of warm and fuzzy sort of thing so I think the title as much as anything else has made it um, a popular series. So let's talk about hats. Welcome to Sunflower Journeys. I'm Dave Kendall. You've worn a few hats I'm Dave over the years. I'm Dave Kendall. Welcome to Sunflower Journeys. I'm Dave Kendall. Moving well you know it's kind of out of um, necessity. <clears throat> because the wind does tend to blow in Kansas. In our final story, my hat's gonna blow off with the British aristocracy, and I'm losing my hat. So you needed something to keep the hair out of your eyes. <laughs> I was actually reminiscing about a, my, my one attempt at doing stand-ups for a story. In our next story, Claire Waring traces the history of coal mining in southeastern Kansas. Dave had the brilliant idea of, well, Claire, why don't you do your narration part live and we'll just set up in front of a slag heap. And, um, okay, I'll give it a try. And the Kansas wind was at its best that day and my hair was all over the place. And I finally get something memorized and the wind would blow and my hair would go like <laughs> this. We got some that we could use, but it was not pretty. Are you rolling? Okay. And fix my hair. Well, it was a very intimidating thing to do. I was very nervous about, you know, co-hosting with Dave Kendall, who'd been hosting for 15 years at that point almost, six, 14 years. But as it worked out, um, we'd get out on the road and it seemed like it was just constant laughter. Well, Emmanuel, what do you say? Well, my <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Sunflower Journeys. I'm Dave Kendall. It's the wrong one. It's, it's the wrong one. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what we're doing. It does. And everyone thought that Dave and I were, people would think we were married. And I'm Amanda Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> we'll learn what some local farmers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Hi, I'm Dave Kendall. <laughs> Sorry. It was, we, it was you know, you're out in the, you're out in this no forever, <laughs> and you know, it's a, waiting, for, you know, for the sun to come out from behind the clouds, or whatever. We had all these just kind of times. We were tired and kind of, usually kind of slap happy. Be sure to visit us on the website. <laughs> forgotten facts is that you weren't the first co-host. No. Yeah, yeah. You didn't. Yes, yes. We had another female in the early days. Was it a dog? It was a dog. Okay, I saw the dog. <laughs> you saw the dog. <laughs> Shakti. Shakti. Well, she came along when I got a house and I needed a dog to fill up the backyard. So, <clears throat> and she was a good little dog and so, you know, she's a good traveling companion. So, you know, I'd take her along when I'd go out to tape the intros and this was, uh, I think, 
started out before Claire was here and you know I was still taping my own intros so he'd set the camera up and on the tripod and and, uh, and figure out some pose while I delivered my lines and in some cases I could do a pose with the dog in the shot because I thought well she's a nice dog there are dog lovers out there they'll like seeing a dog in the shot and so you know we did a few of those that way I remember one of them uh, it was a I can't remember exactly which program it was, but we were doing the intros at around uh, the Rock City, uh, at around Minneapolis, the big boulders out there. So my see you then at the end of the show, uh, I just would take off and walk back through the big boulders and it took, you know, like 30 seconds to get off screen or whatever. And the first three takes, the dog is just kind of like right after me, you know, being very cooperative and knew what she needed to do. Like the fourth take, she just uh, sat there and looked at me as I walked <laughs> off. <laughs> it was kind of like, he's just going to come right back here. I don't need to follow him. <laughs> as she got older, she got less cooperative about it. But I taped a lot of those intros where Dave was, where, where Shakti was along. And it kind of got to be a, a normal thing for at the end, you'd say, see you next week or whatever you say. And, and then you'd give a little quiet whistle. That, she, that only Shakti could hear, and she would, <laughs> she would take off after him, and they'd walk off. And then, but then as she got older, she was like, she'd come along sometimes, but eh, not really in the mood to run after Dave. <laughs> the thrill was gone at that yeah. point, I guess. I want to talk a little bit about technology, because originally, when the series started, you probably carried a few of these around. Mm -hmm. And now, we use these out in the field with a, with a lot of the segments we see. The technology was ridiculous. I, as far as trying to go out and capture things spontaneously. Do you guys But it, it balanced you out though. You it, had 25 pounds on one shoulder with the recorder and then 25 or so on the other shoulder with the camera. So the worst part about it was we keep hooking the cable on something. I remember doing a story with, or it was your story, but I was helping you okay. at the um, Air Museum. Yeah, time at Air Museum. And I was just following you around, you know, Pulling keeping track cables. of your cable yeah. Yeah. <laughs> while you're going around all the different airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, this is what I got a master's yeah. degree for. <laughs> well, it was always it was always helpful to have someone, you know, to, to keep to keep things from catching on your legs yeah. and things yeah. like that. So that's yeah. when you felt like you had arrived. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. when Dave and I went into the cave down in South Central Kansas in the Red Hills, and we're crawling through areas that were probably just two or three, feet, well, maybe three feet high. And I had the camera and Dave's falling along behind me with a three quarter inch recorder, you know, trying to stay out of the mud. And the, the technology was really difficult in that instance, just because it was so hard to, you couldn't stand up straight, you're on your hands and knees dragging everything along. My least favorite camera story is the one of the, the shot of the, the chalk rocks, the big monument rocks. And I was trying to get a shot to show perspective. so. Nobody was there with me. It was all quiet and everything. And so I set the camera down, and I get this beautiful shot of, of, the, uh, of the chalk rocks. And I've decided I'm going to frame myself. I'm going to walk up into this shot. And as I'm walking up into the shot, the camera just does this <laughs> drop over on its side. And you know, suddenly, the whole picture's sideways. And <laughs> I just thought, that's horrible. That's the worst shot. Dave ended up using the first of it in, in the actual open of the show which was fine because the first of it looked great. Yeah, it looks, it looks like a good shot, but it didn't last very long. You'd get out in Western Kansas and there would be no red button. The, the, this, is, this is how you control whether or not you record or protect a tape. If you take the red button out, you can't record on it. You put the red button back in, you can record. And you get out, of course, you can put a piece of tape or something over that little hole and it works. Yeah, if you happen to have a roll of tape with you. But I don't know how, I used to carry a pocket full of these red buttons around. And I'd be dropping them on the carpet at home and they get sucked up in the vacuum cleaner and my <laughs> wife would be angry. So, Again, we still have but this, this was high tech, around. this was high technology <laughs> back in the 70s and 80s. You had to have your red buttons with you so you could record it. Well, let's talk a little bit about food because some of the we have done some stories about food along the way. Probably shouldn't talk with your mouth full though. Just try it. Just try it. Okay. <laughs> that's my <laughs> mm, That's pretty good. It was always interesting going on a shoot with with Claire, who is a vegetarian. And in those days, Kansas wasn't exactly well, it still isn't exactly what you call a vegetarian friendly state. But uh, there are more options now than there was back in those days. And it's really hard to find a restaurant that served anything that didn't have meat in it. They'd put ham in with the green beans and, you know, 
liver and onions. Meat juice with the mashed potatoes or whatever, <laughs> and it was just kind of difficult to. Uh, so how did you get by? What did it, you it do? It was also difficult just politically being out in ranching country. I didn't want to blurt out, well, I don't eat meat, you know, <laughs> and so it was, you had to be a little careful, oh, I'm not hungry right now, or <laughs> whatever, but uh, that reminds me of a story that Dave did. Cattle are so photogenic because they're curious and they look at the camera, so I was running the camera while Dave was interviewing this fellow in front of his, his cattle, and all the cattle were looking at the camera and watching us and looking all cute, and at the end of the interview, I asked the rancher if I could go pet the cattle. And he said, I said, will they bite me or anything? And he said, no, go just stick your hand out. And I stuck my hand out, and one of them reached out and licked my hand. And it was so sweet, it was so soft, and it was looking at me with those big brown eyes. And I said, oh, that's so soft. And he said, yeah, that's good eating. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't say anything. I <laughs> Really? <laughs> I was thinking, <laughs> you know, more like a pet. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Amanda, you found yourself in a prison. Oh, yeah. Well, I went, we went to Lansing as well, and they were very uh, gentlemanly. To heal the sin sick soul, take a breath. That was where we started Plains People. Yeah. Oh, and I wanted you to talk about. Um, how that idea started and what Plains People is supposed to do. Well, Plains People um, was the, the best part about Kansas, I think, is its people. That was something that we always uh, appreciated and, and always the best parts of people came when the camera was off because we had a very formal interview style. And so we decided, um, Scott and I decided that we needed to create something a little different, a little edgier, a little more personal, and so we started this series called, segment series called Plains People. Plains People features a person telling their own process, struggle, or challenge in a point of view production <laughs> style. And our first story was in, um, we went to Lansing with a woman named Elvira Voth. She's an 80-something retired um, opera director who now runs an arts in prison program. And so we went with her to a, a choral session where she directs a choir at the correctional facility. And um, it was just a, I think that was, um, she was a, a perfect person to begin that with because she was so inspirational and such a strong figure. No, who's too low? Don't sing down here, sing up there. She helped us create this really kind of transformational experience where we talk about her, her beautiful choir and her um, inspirational words. And I think that was kind of developed out of that, this philosophy of, um, which I think is, you know, is sort of the way television um, a lot of it with YouTube and that sort of thing, a very a much more personal style where we're helping people tell their own story. And it, this is a very, the, you know, these pieces have no narration and um, they're kind of a little more rough around the edges, a little more raw. And we tried to just let the cameras okay. roll and see and what we happens. Will, uh, please don't peek to see if he's, he's filming you. Nothing looks dumber, <laughs> right? Try, try to ignore him. <laughs> Well, I think we have a very special mission to tell these stories. And i kind of like to see what each of you thinks about what this program gives to the state of Kansas. I don't remember ever leaving an interview without thinking, God, what great people. <laughs> it always surprised me. You need to go in, you'd be a little nervous about meeting new people. I'm an introvert, so it was really kind of hard. but. Um, then at the end of it all, you'd always go, wow, that kind of renews my faith in people. My favorite kinds of stories were stories where people were passionate about something. It doesn't matter what somebody's passionate about. When you talk to them, it's contagious and they're and, and interesting. Local television is very swiftly on its way out. And this is one of the last series that is, you know, produced in a place and it's about a, a certain place and I think that's that in itself has value. 
Well, you know, we get a lot of feedback from people that say they really enjoy the series. It makes them feel proud to be a Kansan, you know. And I think it goes back to what Amanda says, is there's not a whole lot of local uh, programming out there so that, uh, you know, you do see segments on news that may be uh, somewhat similar to what we do, but they only have two minutes at the most to tell the story. So, you know, that's where we've got a, a little bit more luxury of time to tell a story and flesh it out. Well, we hope everyone enjoys the program, and I've really enjoyed talking to you all here. This was a plan of mine that I've had for some time, and it was amazing that it all came together. So with that, I guess that ends our show. Good job, Scott. Thank you for getting us here. Good luck editing. We're done. <laughs>